I am so excited to show you this technique tag. This is creating our own DIY rust paste. How cool does this tag look? It's a great addition to your crafting arsenal to know how to create this look. This is part of the Mixed Media 10 Minute Techniques. We've got all our technique tags here. If you're interested in finding out how to join along with us and create all of these different techniques, you'll find the introduction and the full playlist. I'll make sure that's linked up here. But let's today jump in and see how we create this fantastic rust effect. So the tag I'm working on today is one of our normal tags, but I've die cut a heart in the center. The reason for this is because I could show you the rust effect around the edge, but really we need more edges and such um, joins and things to put rust against to make it look realistic. So by cutting an aperture in the middle, it doesn't have to be a heart, it could be a circle, a square, anything like that. You could even tear yourself a circle if you want to. Um, you're going to have more edges to practice this effect on. So to colour my tag, I have used some spray. I have sprayed some distress st spray stain in salvage patina onto a resistant mat, put water onto my watercolour cardstock tab, tapped it in and that's given me a sort of speckled effect. I did that twice, I dried it and then did it again so I get all these lovely textured bits, they're beautiful. And then I sprayed directly onto here with this oxide spray in speckled egg as well to add some more texture and colour and dried it all off. So very simple adding colour. I will be covering um, using sprays and sort of smooshing into ink in another video later on so don't stress too much as long as you've got a little bit of colour somehow you could even just use coloured cardstock instead of our watercolour cardstock for this tag. So this is my DIY rust paste. It's very similar to lots of DIY texture pastes that you'll see out there with the addition of a couple of extra bits. So there's a few things you're going to need. Now, I know not many people um, always have acrylic paints. As crafters, particularly paper crafters, many of us start with inks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a paste first of all that you can add your inks to and then I'm going to add the paint and show you why I tend to do that um, to create my rust paste. So there's going to be two different versions here for you and I'll do around the edge in one and I'll do um, maybe around the heart in another. So let's get started without the paint first of all. So I have got some glue in here. This is like a PVA glue, You're just your general white paper glue, nothing special. It's quite thick in particular this one, so I'm going to add a few squirts of water to this to start loosening it up. Now I keep water to the hand because every time I do this I tend to end up with a different consistency and I want to make sure that I get it just right. Okay, now what I've also got is corn flour. Um, some people like to use a baking powder, something like that. Um, you could even use plaster of Paris, um, either of, whatever you've got to hand and I'm going to really mix that into the glue. I like to get messy here. As you can see, it's starting to clump together. Let it clump together so that you can really make sure the glue is spread throughout nice and evenly, and then you can add some water if needed. But as you can see, it's starting to really sort of get to a nice, consistency there where it's a little bit runny at the moment there's still some powder around the edge that I'm going to continue mixing in it's not running out of the jar though so I could easily put that onto my project no problem so I'm not actually going to add any more water at the moment I want a paste that is just going to sit where it needs to be and not kind of run all down my project. Now my kind of secret ingredient as such is old embossing powders. If you've got any embossing powders that you don't tend to use anymore or some that you're happy to use if you've got lots of them, big tubs or whatever, I tend to put embossing powders into my texture paste for two reasons. The grittiness of the embossing powder helps to add texture to it but also if you decide to heat set a little bit your rust paste and we'll look at that later, you will get some nice, particularly with metallic ones, you'll get little specks of metal um, and glossiness coming through um, and I just think it's a really nice effect. So I don't add a huge amount, so let's just sprinkle. So there's probably a few pinches there and um, this one is a copper colour so I know that if I was to heat this up and some of the powder particles 
did actually um, start to melt, I would get this nice copper colour coming through. And this one is a black charcoal sort of colour. Like I say, the main aim for this is adding a little more grittiness, a little more texture to your rust paste. It will add some colour, depending on what embossing powders you use. So mix that in again, make sure that is mixed in really, really thoroughly. Now, bear in mind this glue, the white glue should, most paper or PVA glues will dry clear. So don't worry at the moment, it's looking quite grey, but there we go, I have my paste. Now I would tend to mix this up for a project when I want to use it. I don't tend to keep it. It's not going to keep very easily for very long. Um, you can, or certainly not wet, it will set, it will go hard, um, unless you've got a really, really good airtight container and you can really seal it, but even then, I wouldn't want to try and keep this for very long, which is why I just do it in a little glass dish. Many of you will recognise this if you're in the UK, those desserts that come in these, I always wash them up and keep them for things like this. So I've got my sticky texture paste there. So now I'm going to wipe my surface and start putting this on my tag as it is. So I've just got my palette knife there and I'm just sort of scraping it off the on the edge of the inside of the heart, little bits at a time. Now when I'm thinking about adding rust to any project, I think about the direction that I'm putting it on. So. If this was a piece of metal and it was sitting outside exposed to the elements it would be exposed to rain and so the rain water would tend to go down the shape the item whatever it is and gather more at the bottom and in certain areas where you've got divots and things so my rust paste will always be more down the bottom here and I'll kind of bring that almost drips down but also in just one or two places on the lower edge of your shape it just as if it's just sort of coming so you can see so it's just dripping down now I've put the rust paste all the way around there probably just take it a little bit further off the top I don't need quite so much there's a few granules left there and just try to stagger the thickness so it's not an even thickness all the way around. Okay, so that's quite sticky. So what we need to do now is just leave that one to dry. You can, of course, heat set this. Uh, I'm going to do that just to speed things up. Now, what you'll find if you're holding your um, heat gun too close to it, the glue's going to bubble. It will get a skin on it really quickly and it will bubble up. Now I like that effect, so I'm quite happy to go ahead and do that. And don't forget, you may well find that some of your embossing powder particles also melt and show through a little bit of metallic. So um, don't stress about that. It's entirely up to you whether you prefer to leave it to air dry and just have the texture there or heat set it and see what effect you get. This is the idea of these tags. You can practice all of these different methods and see which you prefer. So I'm going to go ahead with my heat tool. So as you can see, at this stage, we've got the texture, but we don't yet have the color of rust. And this is where we're going to use our inks and things. So I've got a small paintbrush here because this is the easiest way to apply the ink. I've got Distress Oxide. I've got Oxide because the pigments will sit on top of the almost water resistant um, the glue that's in there, whereas a dye would kind of just bead off of it more. So I'm going to pick this up. Now you're going to need quite a bit of ink, um, the Distress Oxide ink, because it won't go very far. But look, we can now just dab all over our texture paste. And you can leave some spaces because this is just going to give you some great effects where you've got light and dark. Now you can also mix up the colours that you're using as well. So I'm using Rusty Hinge here. You can go in with lots of other colours as well if you wish. I'm going to clean off my brush because this is actually my favourite way to add colour if I haven't done it with the acrylic paint. And that's actually an orange alcohol ink. So again, not something if you're just beginning out with craft, maybe not something that you have to hand. This will colour absolutely anything really quickly. Alcohol ink will dry on any surface, including glossy. So if you're brave, and I've got a piece of um, matte under here, you can just put the very tip just onto the texture there, like so. And I'm not even squeezing it, but I'm allowing it to drip out. Or, of course, you could take your 
paintbrush and do exactly as we just did with the alcohol ink instead and just brush it over the surface. So you can see a slight difference there, the darker alcohol ink and the brighter uh, rusty hinge. Now I am going to add some more colours to these with just my Distress inks um, in a little while and I'll do that after we've done the acrylic paint rust paste. So let's move on to that. So with the same mixture that we've been using already, I'm just going to apply some acrylic paint in a kind of brown that's a nice warm brown. I'm not adding too much because the colour will spread quite quickly and I don't want to kind of water down my texture paste too much. Now, uh, this is definitely my preferred way to create myself a rust paste. Um, much, much easier than applying the colour afterwards, but hopefully if you don't have the paint, you can try the first method. So mixing that in there, so this is like I say, just a texture paste, essentially a homemade DIY texture paste, along with a rusty colour. So make sure everything is mixed in, although when it's dry, you won't really see bright white out there because we've got that embossing powder in. I think I'm going to actually add a little more of the darker colour embossing powder just to deepen that colour a bit more too. You can play around with the quantities of everything. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're really not happy with the paste you've mixed up, just you know put it in the bin, start again. It's only a little bit of your mediums that you're using. Okay, so now I'm going to go back on again. This time, just to give you a different effect, I'm actually going to stipple this on with a brush. So I've got a brush here that's got some quite firm bristles and this time we're going to go around the edge. So dipping that into our rust paste and putting it on stippling it. So you can see the colour isn't all that different and we are really going to make this look much more realistic and rusty um, in a little while, but we're essentially getting texture in here as well as the colour so that those sort of grainy bumps that you would get with rust so just working around the edge and of course rust will mostly form on edges where water can essentially sit and seep in but it will also form in small patches um, just on say if it was a piece of metal just on a fair bit and I would do some stippling to give that sort of effect just in a few places. So I'm going to just work around the edge of my tag applying this and again not everywhere, more in the corners, certainly more in the corners and have some places where there's almost none and some places where there's really quite a lot coming into the tag. Because I'm going to have my hole at the top I'm also going to put some around here too. So I've been really quite random with that. I mean, how cool does that look? Now at this stage, you can try to seal up your paste if you've got a lot left, like me. Um, try sealing it. I would put some cling film in there and press it in so it's as airtight as possible, an elastic band around the top and see if I can make it last. But essentially it's fine. If you're doing a larger project anyway, you're, you're probably going to use most of that up. So just heat setting this to make sure everything dries nicely and then we're going to just make this look a little more dimensional and realistic with some general craft black inks. I'm going to be using my Distress ink and a blending brush. Now that this is dry or as I'm drying it I want to draw your attention just to this particular corner because that has bubbled up really nicely. Hopefully you can see the texture and the dimension on there, which rust would often bubble anyway, but I'm hoping you can just see in there, it's minute, but it's a lovely effect, those embossing powder particles as well. So I'm just starting to get a little bit of shimmer coming through from those two. So now that's all dry, I'm going to add my Distress ink and I would do this with whatever method I've used and just brush on the inside edge mostly so just to kind of darken that part so this is just going to go around the edge the inside of the heart there you might finally want to just brush over some of the tops of the orange particularly if you've got large pieces like so and then around the edge of the card as well and I'm obviously not going in as far as the orange paste has gone in I'm just capturing the very edges here 
so there we go that's just finished that off nicely I mean how much does that look like an old piece of rusted metal and there's actually kind of three different methods in there all with a homemade rust paste so I hope you've enjoyed playing with this technique this is quite I suppose an advanced one a really mucky one as well as always um, but I'm going to add this I'm going to punch the hole in the top and I'm going to add this to our um, technique tags the ones we've done already and if you are wondering about these and you want to try out some of the techniques in these tags as well you can see the full playlist for the mixed media 10 minute techniques just here where we're creating a new tag every few days trying out a new technique thank you everybody i can't wait to see your technique tags in the facebook group i'll see you very soon Bye bye